this video, we are going to remove a liner from a TS3 diesel engine. This is of the liners. There's three of these liners in the engine. Now, each liner has two pistons, and the pistons come in from the ends and meet in the middle. This is the injector port where the diesel injector screws in and squirts the diesel in between the two pistons. Um, for, um, so if you've got one of these engines, you're doing it up, <clears throat> sometimes these rust through. The red areas are where the water jacket is. Uh, sometimes these can rust through or crack. Or you might just have a good set of pistons and liner that you want to put in your engine. Getting these liners out, there's no easy way to do it. Um, you, unless you have the correct tools, which are, which are very hard to find now, uh, I'll show you how I've made mine. So here's the workshop manual on the Comma TS3 engine. And you can see there uh, the correct tool, which is the Churchill RG150, which is the pulling tool to remove the liner. Finding one of these tools is almost as difficult as finding the Holy Grail nowadays. You just, you're just not going to find it. Um, if you're lucky enough to have one, well, you won't be watching this, this video. Um, so what I've done is made a puller out of scrap metal from just my junkyard that is uh, similar and basically does the same job. Here is my puller assembly that I've made myself. It consists of a large piece of um, threaded rod, a couple of spacer pipes, a 3D printed plastic piston, and a cast iron wheel, the same diameter as the, as the um, outer, uh, bore of the liner. So um, this acts as the foot of the puller, goes through the liner, and then this big piece of eye channel, eye bar, which I've uh, chopped the sides off of just to make it a little bit easier to use and put a welded a handle onto it, um, is actually the puller. So the eye bar, these pieces here, and the bottom rails of the eye bar are actually the exact size to fit. Oops, let me get this right. To fit on the uh, bottom edge and the top edge of the crankcase set, the same as this fella does. And then the hole in the middle is where we put the threaded rod. These spacers are required to add extra strength because even this, which is Probably 10 mil thick eye bar is not strong enough to pull a liner out on its own. Um, so I put a couple of spacers which rest against the crankcase and uh, the inner liner and then help give it a bit of extra strength in pulling it out. So what we're going to do is we're going to get a scrap TS3 engine, bring it into the workshop um, and we're going to get the Jeep out, put the TS3 engine there and um, pull out a liner. So let's go get an engine. Okay, so here we have a scrap engine. Um, it's not really a scrap engine. It's an engine I may rebuild at a later date. It's a uh, early uh, 1950s-ish uh, TS3, um, and I use it at the moment as a donor, really, for parts for my running TS3. 
So this is one we're going to have a look at inside. So we'll remove the side part, uh, side covers, and um, have a look inside. This is a good opportunity to see the inside workings of a TS3. Um, so you've got the two liners there, there's one already missing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sneak the liner that we had on the bench uh, back in this hole and um, pull it back in and then remove it again to, uh, to show you how that's done. These are the rocker arms. The oil on these things is just terrible. Um, <clears throat> they probably won't put gloves on. The uh, crankshaft down underneath there. Then you've got the first sort of connecting rod, if you like, which connects to the bottom of the rocker arm. And then there's another wrist pin that connects onto the piston. Um, and then these rocker arms transfer the power from the pistons down to the crankshaft. Um, easy to remove. So on the piston arm, two bolts, you undo the two bolts, slide out the pin, drop out the rocker arm. Same at this end, down on that link pin down there, down on that um, connecting rod, undo the two bolts, slide out the pin, this drops. Then you undo these four securing nuts, big like lock nuts, and then this whole assembly will just lift off. side and we'll set up the, um, the pull up. Okay, I've taken the top uh, <clears throat> air inlet cover off so you can see the, uh, the liner in the middle there, the one we're pulling out. This is the liner that was on the bench earlier. Um, I've pulled it almost all the way back in and then we're going to remove it again just to show you the puller at work. Um, there was no need to remove the other two liners as I have no use for them and um, want to leave them in the engine at this stage. So the puller is set up, the foot is in. Um, and we can start removing it. Although this liner was only just put back in, it is still really tight and I, um, I will make you work to get it out. Once they start to move, moments where it has to pull through to the next section where it'll become very easy. Definitely a lot easier if you've got two people helping you as well. That's if you don't have the genuine RG150A root screw puller. Now we're extracting this through the next it'll start to get very tight. Yeah. 
And there it goes through the next section. get high tensile threaded rod that would be a lot better. This is just galvanized standard threaded rod and uh, it's binding up a bit from uh, wear. When you're building your puller when you think you've made it strong enough make it stronger and be prepared for bits to break. Um, the cast iron foot on the other end I've broken that a couple of times getting these out. Some of them are so rusted in you'll be prepare yourself for a battle to get them out. Once you've got your liner out, you may think you've uh, won the battle, but you haven't. Getting it back in is equally as hard, if not harder. What you've got to do is you've got to line up this injector port exactly with this injector plate here. Um, if you don't get it spot on, the injector sleeve will not screw into this port. And I'll show you what I do to get that to line up. So what I've got here is a spare injector sleeve that I've cut the thread off of the bottom. Now the injector sleeve usually screws into the top of the block here and then the thread, threaded part screws into the uh, liner here so that where the, so the injector can go in there and screw it in the diesel. And what I've done is I've cut the thread off and then I've made this bolt and I've machined that flat so that it can fit in that groove like that and it lines up so what you do is you screw the threaded part of the injector sleeve in to the liner you insert the liner in getting it as close as you as you think this little hole here is actually the alignment for the original if you have the proper tool um, for a lot for getting this thing uh, lined up perfectly so you need to get that perfectly straight up to the top of the motor level top of the motor um, and then you'll be in line here so putting that in you'll get it in as best you can and then um, as you're pressing it in you line up this port now this is not as easy as it seems and it may take you a couple of goes but once this is in line and you've got it perfectly in line that bolt will drop through into that injector nozzle and then you know you're perfectly in line and then you remove the bolt and you can use something like this magnetic tool pickup tool to unscrew oh, once I get it on there it's hard to film and do this with one hand and unscrew and remove the thread so that liner will be going into this engine. This engine is an engine I restored a couple of years ago, and many of you have probably seen this running on um, on YouTube. 
Um, this engine, number two cylinder on this engine is not that great. It's got a uh, couple of very bad pistons in it and um, uh, the line is quite worn. So I'm going to, at the moment I'm sourcing a couple of better pistons, um, some rings, and I intend to uh, install that liner, which is still in spec and in good condition, uh, which I've got out of that other engine, and install it into this one. So I might make a video of that when I do that. If you want to see that, um, please subscribe. That may be a little bit down the track yet because finding finding pistons and rings is really hard. Um, so that's it. So that's my puller for pulling out liners and how I do it. I think it's one of the hardest jobs when you're working on a TS3 or any horizontally um, opposed diesel engine. Um, but if you can make pullers and things like that yourself, you'll save yourself a lot of money. There is probably pullers available that you can buy on the market, but they're very expensive and you may break them because this is not what they'd be intended for. Um, whereas if I break a fretted rod at the moment, it's no big deal. You know, it's it's 5 or $7 from the hardware store. Um, I think I could make it a lot stronger by welding in um, triangle corner pieces into the iframe. And there's a lot more I could do there to improve it. You will need it as strong as you can make it. Uh, it takes a hell of a lot of force to pull these liners out. So um, just be aware of that. Anyway, thanks for watching. Um, if you want to see more videos on Tomah stuff, um, these old engines and uh, uh, or restorations of old vehicles and machinery, please uh, subscribe. Uh, have a great day and I will see you later.